right, so how often do you recommend going to failure in a training session, if at all? Okay, so failure, it depends how you define failure, and this is very important. Do, do I think people need to go to absolute failure in training? No, and I would not recommend it, certainly not with the main movements. But when you hear AMRAP, people think, whoa, well, that's a set to failure, right? As many reps as possible. So maybe a better way to look at it would be like AMGRAP, you know? as many good reps as possible. It just doesn't kind of roll off the tongue the same way. So that's why we say AMRAP. When we get breakdown, that's when we end sets. Okay, that's, that's a general rule. So in other words, if you start to fail, you might not actually fail on a lift before, you might make it three subpar reps before you actually fail. So at the first subpar rep, at the first sign of breakdown, at the first sign of, you know, you're losing your back in a squat or, you know, lose, starting to lose a shoulder and bench press, rack it. Whenever you're doing reps that start to suck, remember you're training yourself to suck. This comes back to something I've said before. If you're doing sets of five and three of them are shitty, the first two are good and the second three, you know, the, the second half of the, of the exercises of the movement is shitty, 60% of your training in that scenario is training you to move horribly. So we want all of your training to be for you to move correctly. So I'd rather have you do a bunch of, a bunch of sets of two than do a set of five and uh, the, the second, you know, the, the three reps at the end are, are garbage. You know what I mean? So I look at it that way. It's not a matter of whether or not you actually are failing in training. It's a matter of when you start to break down. So in other words, once technique starts to decay a little bit, starts to break down, that's when we end the set. The AMRAPs, so that stuff's pretty clearly laid out in the fifth set in terms of how often you should be going that close to failure. And do you program that differently on compounds and isolations? Or like a single joint versus a compound? I don't, that's the thing, we'll never have an AMRAP on a single joint movement, you know? But um, I, I guess technically you would, you could if you did uh, the very high rep protocol. The, the, uh, the, the, it's a sort of um, metabolic stress training. It's included in the Evolutions book. I actually wrote an article on my column that you can find on EliteFTS.com about that, about the metabolic stress protocol for hypertrophy. So and in that, in that case you would, but those are extremely high reps. So like when you're failing on a set of 30, <laughs> multiple sets of 30, time constraints and so forth, you're failing for different reasons. You know, you're not failing because the neurological stress is causing you to fail. You know, you're not failing because motor units can't be recruited quickly enough like you are when you fail on strength work. That's gonna keep me high on my traps. Bring that bar out, and now I'm gonna cue reaching. Okay, when I say reaching, we're talking about reaching for the bar with your chest, so it looks like this. See that? So you're trying to reduce the distance between the bar and your chest like you're meeting it halfway. 